Welcome back to DC Wrap. I'm Pat Pobletti with WISPolitics.com, and I'm pleased to bring you a special edition of our interview series featuring a conversation between WISPolitics.com editor J.R. Ross and Marquette University Law School poll director Charles Franklin on the state of polling and some of the errors we saw reflected in Tuesday night's election. I'll kick it over to JR now. Take it away, boss. So, Charles, I guess I wanted to start four years ago. We had a conversation about what happened then. And the conversation was about you need to wait for education and late breakers for Trump because you came out of the field eight days before the election and there was no quality polling between what you did in 16 and the end. What's your initial takeaway now? I mean, is it the methodology? Is it the Trump voter? What is happening that I got a ton of polls the last week this time, and they were all largely off? I, I think it's a little bit about fighting the last war. You never know what the next problem is <laughs> going to be. Um, I, I think that we did have a different set of issues, though we're way short of knowing what all these answers are. Um, I think we did, for example, have more polling late in the campaign. And so that did not pick up a tighter race in the last week. So if there was any kind of last minute surge, it went undetected by those late polls. Um, in some ways, we did a little better. My poll last time, four years ago, was off by seven points and with the wrong winner. This time we're off by about four points and with the right winner. Uh, and the margin of error was plus or minus 4.4 points. So we didn't do as badly as last time. On the other hand, we welcomed a host of additional polls in the state. And while some of them were in the four to five point range where my poll had been really stuck from most of the end of the summer through, through the election, some of that polling, even if it was initially a little tighter, finished the race in the eight to 10 or even 11 point range. And we had an outlier or two as well. Um, and that was a pattern throughout the country. As a result, the polling average, I think is gonna be worse this time than four years ago even though I'm a little bit better off um, at, the, at the low end of that margin. Um, why that is, though, remains to be seen. Um, you know, one, one thing that we warned about all year but did not find evidence for was that Trump supporters simply systematically declined to talk to pollsters. We've looked for the evidence of that without finding it, but this will certainly prompt another round of looking for that. The other is the Trump campaign talked a lot about mobilizing less likely voters to get them to turn out. And that maybe did happen. Um, I think we'll certainly be looking at what happened with election day turnout, uh, but we'll need some time to get the data for that. Uh, in our data, we had a model that predicted about a 3.1 million turnout, and that was our likely voter model. But we did report in our final release a model assuming high turnout, 3.2 million turnout. And the margin in that one was actually a four-point margin, just a smidgen tighter than the, the already fairly high turnout that we had. That's only a one-point difference, so don't make too much of it. But it does suggest that higher turnout in this case may have helped Trump. And we saw a hint of that in our final data, but uh, not as much as the race obviously tightened by election day. Now, in talking to people in the last week about the polling, I heard several theories about why it might be off. One was the response rate was down, especially among conservatives, so that that might be make it harder for pollsters to reach Republicans. I heard the theory that some people who were actually Democrats were saying they're independents or Republicans because they wanted to pump up Biden's numbers, which I know you can't uh, detect that kind of thing. Um, the shy voter or shy Trump supporter theory, um, do any of these things like have any real truth to them in I, your mind? 
Well, I mean, some of them are things that we look for. For example, our polling consistently shows something very close to a 45% Republican, 45% Democratic split in the state. And that's been quite stable for the last four years. So we didn't see any evidence that Republicans became less willing to talk to us in the last months of this campaign. We didn't see that 45-45 split shift. If anything, I think it was a plus one Republican sample in the last poll. Um, so again, it's not for lack of looking for these things. It's possible that that's still there. Let me put a different way. As of now, four of the last six presidential races here have been determined by 25,000 votes or less, all of them less than 1%. Only the two Obama races were not close. So if you go by that standard, we had a pretty normal Wisconsin election, basically dead even with a margin <laughs> under 25,000 votes. It does make me wonder why I don't just say every race is tied and then I'd be close. <laughs> now, we've talked about Trafalgar and his methodology. I mean, we're, our standard was politics requires disclosure of the methodology from transparency. They don't disclose things. But his argument that I've seen is that you have to reach people in different ways, shorter surveys, give them longer time to fill it out, um, that people don't want to disclose their, um, their, their, their the preferred candidate. Same time, I mean, as much as he was right in Wisconsin, he was off in Michigan and Pennsylvania, you know, bar, we're waiting final results in those two states. He had Trump plus four or five in those states. So nobody was perfect that I've seen so far. But is there something that argument of people aren't, you know, there, there needs to be a change in how you reach people right. and how long you talk to them when you reach them. I, I think there are two parts to this. One is a valid methodological concern. Are there better ways to reach people? Are shorter surveys, for example, a better way to do that? The trouble is uh, having uh, one or two successes and ignoring failures is not proof of a new methodology working better. And transparency is a big part of that. In the polling profession, we're relatively open to transparency of talking about our methods and how they're done. And that's, you know, a big issue for coming out of this race is what can we learn from each other. So I think pollsters have adopted a wide variety of alternative ways to reach people, including contacting them first by text message, by email and, and internet recruitment, by even old fashioned postal surveys sent to a home address. All of these are things that are being actively looked at, but I don't mm -hmm. think we are ready to say that any of them are a magic bullet that guarantees success. And I think Trafalgar did come closer in a number of states, but you've also got to pay attention to where they were further off, not closer. As with all yeah, of us, also, we, our successes and yeah. our failures, not just cherry picking the best results. It, look, in 2018, you were on the nuts at the end of the race, in the governor's, governor's race between Scott Walker and Tony Evers. Is this a Donald Trump phenomenon with the polling because the places we were off, right, were in the two elections, he was on the ballot. Is that possibly it's unique to him? Yeah, I would have told you no, but after last night, I'm going to at least hold that open. Um, <laughs> you know, it is striking. And just set aside the personal side, just think of this. We were quite close in the 2014 elections, in the 2012 elections. Then we had an awful night on the presidency in 2016. Then in 18, we were right on the governor and the Senate. And we were very close within two points in the uh, Democratic primary this spring. So, as I've said many times, if polling were fundamentally broken, how could we have had those successes? And granted, we had a big failure with Trump in 16. This year, I think, actually, I'm pretty happy with the outcome to be within three or four points in a race that, that tightened so much. I, I'm not unhappy with that result and the plus or minus 4.4 margin of error. Obviously, I'd rather be spot on, but it is striking that this phenomena, not just for us, but for all pollsters this year, seems so specific to Trump elections, and maybe it does have something to do with Trump voters. 
having more difficulty reaching them, possibly having them turn out at different rates, maybe more energized by Trump than what we traditionally see in a pool of likely voters. So I think these are all issues, but if 2016 put them on the uh, examining table, they're all on the emergency room table now after last night's polling uh, errors. Great. Uh, Charles, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it as always. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks.